Hi guys, it is a balmy 32 degrees here in the end times here in the former paradise of Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York, baby. On this, uh, where are we? It is Tuesday, November 15th. We are halfway through November. Far as I can see into the future here in the weather forecast, we will not see 44 degrees is at least between now and Thanksgiving. So uh, this is your, uh, <laughs> I guess, well, I'm not a snowbird. This is your, your whatever I am. What, what are you, clueless moron? I guess that's what I am for sticking it out uh, this winter. Well, not, I guess, I should use another term than sticking it out this winter. Good Lord. So the uh, the latest plan is Suriname. I think I'm going to head to Suriname uh, from late January to early March. Does anybody have any advice about going to Suriname? Pro or con, please let me know. And oh yes, before I plow ahead. I do want to send out a huge thank you to Kind Hearted Tribes member Fred Baker for sending me this brand new better camera which I'm trying to learn how to use. So what your what this is I have it set on 640 with the standard screen size which I guess is 43. So uh, anyway since it's too cold to go work on tiny houses. I do not own a pair of gloves. Sitting here just going through the mainstream media to keep myself from going crazy. And uh, do I want to have seven tiny little rants? We're just going to do a, a mainstream media roundup. Uh, you can draw your own dots between this. Seven stories that I just thought were worth mentioning. We're going to start off in the great state of Texas. Yes. Where a dancing man on top of an 18-wheeler slams into bridge and dies. Okay, we do have some good news coming out of Texas. We are the uh, global population just had its IQ raised by one eight billionth of a point. So this is what the youngsters are up to uh, the past couple of days. A 25 year old man either jumped or climbed onto, I guess, jumped or climbed onto a moving 18-wheeler before starting to dance, authorities in Texas said. But when the semi-trailer <clears throat> traveling south on the East Tex Freeway passed underneath, the, underneath a bridge, the dancing man, you know, who had his back turned, uh, you know, he had his back turned, uh, was dancing for the camera like Bill Hicks uh, on acid talking to the cops. Uh, the dancing man slammed into the overpass and was knocked off the vehicle. He landed on the freeway below. Yes. All right. The man was rushed to a local hospital where he was pronounced dead. There you go. Authority said they believe the man might have been recording himself as he danced atop the truck. A video shared on Facebook shows the man dancing on the semi before his fatal accident. Police questioned and released the driver of the 18-wheeler who was unaware someone had gotten on top of his truck. <laughs> oh God, you just gotta love it, putting a smile on my face. But anyway, 
a lot of you might think, you know, I was just commenting, this guy Humpty Dumpty was commenting onto that story only in Texas or Florida. And then I looked at the story, you know, right next to that story. And here we are in Pennsylvania going from a 25-year-old to a 19-year-old. 19-year-old party goer climbs into dumpster, gets crushed by garbage truck. <laughs> oh, God. A 19-year-old man is dead after being crushed by a garbage truck. Pennsylvania police say this is Ken Bischoff. He was a national honor student, apparently. Uh, Ke I'm sorry, Kellen Bischoff of New Jersey was in Cutstown, Pennsylvania, visiting family over the weekend. He went to a house party in town and was seen leaving after midnight on Saturday. He was reported missing the next morning. Hours later, at 8.41 a.m., police in neighboring Exeter responded to an area recycling facility where a body had been found among trash dr dropped off by a truck. Uh, he was identified by his tattoos. There you go. Surveillance video shows Bischoff climb into a dumpster between a, behind a Dollar Tree, now a Dollar Twenty-Five Tree. He was still inside the dumpster, apparently, when a garbage truck arrived several hours later, picked up the dumpster, emptied it into the back of the truck, and compressed the load. Yes, investigators believe the National Honor student's death was an accident. There you go. Uh, so one less 25-year-old moron and one less 19-year-old uh, moron, but don't think it's the youngsters uh, capturing all the attention. Now, I don't know the ages of these six people, but I'm pretty sure they were older than 25 and probably older than me, probably uh, a, a bunch of old men. <clears throat> I meant to do this uh, as my Veterans Day uh, rant. I was gonna do a full rant on it, but somehow it slipped between the cracks at the laundromat, and somehow I said, I ah, shit, might as better late than never. By now, this is uh, old news uh, about the moment a World War II bomber and fighter plane collided at a Texas air show, leaving s six people dead, and I'm sure you have seen this absolutely glorious picture coming out of the great state of Texas and uh, you, you, you know <laughs> all joking aside if I had to you know to show a photograph that uh, encapsulates my view of uh, Veterans Day I think these two warplanes colliding with each other uh, in the great state of Texas, killing six people. I, I, I mean, how could you have a better Veterans Day uh, celebration than that? Uh, this, <laughs> anyway, okay, so what are we up to? We're up to eight clueless morons off the planet. <clears throat> but speaking of clueless morons, we have to uh, take a quick stop by the election. Uh, obviously, I, have not, I haven't been talking much about the election, but I cannot let this latest one. So I guess Herschel Walker 
and that other dude are in a runoff in the state of Georgia. Uh, so it will either be 51 Democrats and 49 Republicans or 50-50, depending on who wins. So uh, Herschel Walker is still out on the campaign trail in Georgia. <clears throat> Herschel Walker says U.S. should keep gas-guzzling cars that produce good emissions. Campaigning in Georgia on Sunday, Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker said the United States is not ready to implement policies like the Green New Deal that are designed to address climate change. And right now, I agree 100%. Hammond Littletail agrees with Herschel Walker that the United States is not ready to implement policies like the Green New Deal that are designed to address climate change. Instead, Walker suggested the country needs to, quote, keep having those gas-guzzling cars, close quote, that produce what he calls, quote, good emissions. And you can go on if you have not seen this. Uh, I wonder, can I play this video without getting a copyright strike? Probably not. Uh, anyway, you can find this. It's all over the place. Uh, but this is what Herschel was saying, quoting from his campaign rally. Quote, if we was ready for the green agenda, I'd raise my right hand now, but we're not ready right now. So don't let them fool you like this is a new agenda. This is not a new agenda. We're not prepared. We're not ready right now. What we need to do is keep having those gas-guzzling cars cause we got the good emissions under those cars. We're doing the best thing that we can, close quote. <laughs> and guys, I honestly don't know whether I want uh, Herschel Walker in the U.S. Senate or not. Uh, good fucking God. It, it, you know, the fact that this moron, this mentally ill moron, uh, is, is, is even running for the U.S. Senate, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it says more. It says more about the clueless moron uh, Republican voters than it does... Uh, than it does Herschel Walker himself. The uh, Rolling Stone actually had a good article on this. With Herschel Walker, the stupidity is the point. I'm not going to get into that story, but it was a good one too. Uh, about, you know, where voters that, you know, that there's people claiming that the voters are as stupid as, as as Herschel Walker, but as Rolling Stone pointed out, uh, it's not, that there's no way that that many people in Georgia uh, could, could be that stupid to vote for Herschel Walker. Uh, they just are, they're going to vote for anybody that will just rubber stamp the Republican ticket and just vote along with, with uh, the other uh, 48 or 49 Republican senators. That uh, there is no danger of Herschel Walker ever stepping out of, out of line. And uh, as one of the people in the Rolling Stone article said, uh, I would vote for Daffy Duck as my senator uh, just to carry the MAGA party line. And, and speaking of the 
uh, MAGA county, the, the MAGA party line. And so, ladies, I'm getting ready to use the C word. So, Sandy or others, if you're in, if you're just cannot hear the C word, I'm warning you. You're getting ready to hear it. And this is that fucking cunt, Carrie Lake. Never heard of this fucking clueless bitch in my entire life. Never knew who she was. But I was talking to my, uh, well, now former Trump tarred friend in Texas. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And uh, we were talking about how all of her candidates lost. And this is when this bitch, Carrie Lake, uh, was running against, uh, who is it, Katie Hobbs, who I guess won. And, you know, my friend was saying, well, as long as Carrie Lake wins Arizona, all is not lost. But we got some bad news. Carrie Lake did lose. And this is from Rolling Stone. The MAGA media is melting down over Carrie Lake's loss. All right. Uh... Lake, of course, uh, Lake, an avowed election denier, is insinuating foul play is responsible for her loss and MAGA pundits are following suit. Lake tweeted shortly after she found out she had lost, quote, Arizonans know BS when they see it. That is exactly what they know. They know BS when they see it, uh, wh which is why they voted this bitch out of there. Uh, you know, obviously anybody uh, looking at this clueless fucking bitch uh, knows BS when they see it. Uh, and of course, uh, Donald Trump, a particularly huge fan of Lake, um, took to Truth Social to insinuate that the election had been wrongfully decided, quoting Donald Trump, wow, that they, they just took the election away from Carrie Lake. It's really bad out there. And I like this response, which is almost verbatim to what immediately came to my mind. ASIM, by they, Trump must mean the voters. That is exactly right. Wow, the voters just took the election away from Kerry Lake. It's really bad out there. Yep, 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 yep. Anyway, but manga media, I'm sure, is melting down. But I will say I was pleasantly shocked, uh, you know, talking to my Trump tard friend on, uh, on, uh, a couple of days ago about the election results, uh, I was astounded to find out that she is not planning to vote for Donald Trump a third time in 2024. You know, this is my best friend on the planet, voted for him in 2016 and 2020, a firm election denier. She thinks, uh, you know, this is a college-educated intelligent, otherwise intelligent, uh, articulate woman uh, firmly believes the election was stolen and that Donald Trump is the rightful president now, but she is not going to vote for him on the condition that Ron DeSantis runs against Donald Trump and uh, so right here in the mainstream media today, so I guess they did a straw poll of Texas uh, Republican voters, you know, just asking the, the question in 2024, if it does come down to a race between Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis, and they threw a couple of other names in there to round it out, uh, would you vote for, uh, you know, oh, who would you vote for? 
which is kind of another way of saying, would you vote for Donald Trump again, is in fact what they were saying. And Ron DeSantis, in the state of Texas, beat out Donald Trump by 11 percentage points in a poll of registered Texas Republicans. And if my friend had gotten that, she would have said Ron DeSantis. So uh, I'm not saying Ron DeSantis, uh, President DeSantis uh, is going to be, but I, you know, I don't mind saying, guys, uh, Ron DeSantis or Joe Biden, uh, there's, you know, Ron DeSantis is closer to Joe Biden than he is to Donald Trump. All right. Uh, so anyway, uh, anybody other than Donald Trump. Okay. Two more. We're going to switch gears for our daily dose of sub-Saharan Africa news from Reuters News. Donors must act now to save East Africa from famine. Yes, donors need to provide cash now to save lives and not wait for famine to be declared in parts of East Africa where tens of millions of people are going hungry. The head of the International Rescue Committee said on Tuesday, Yes, and then they, you know, it's the same story over and over and over again about how, uh, you know, Honky needs to cough up the bucks. It is all Honky's fault. It, it, it is, uh, you know, it's, it's my fault for getting a plane ticket to Suriname. I am the one who is uh, putting 22 million sub-Saharan Africans at risk of starvation. Of course, Vladimir Putin is the number one honky on the planet. It is Vladimir Putin's fault, that honky, more than anybody else, that 22 million sub-Saharan Africans are starving to death. Obviously, on the day that we supposedly hit 8 billion people. Uh, on the day that we hit 8 billion people, you will not see uh, overpopulation showing uh, up anywhere on this story. I was going to read you the comment by this guy. Oh, here it is. Unbelievable. Uh, with four thumbs up, this fellow named Humpty Dumpty, I thought for a minute the Yahoo community had ripped it down, but no, the Yahoo community is okay with this comment. <clears throat> From Humpty Dumpty, with four thumbs up, no thumbs down. I think that somebody know that says, what do you think? Humpty Dumpty says, I think that somebody who was never born cannot die of starvation. If you subtract the number of starving people, mostly children who should never have been born, from the 2022 population, my guess is it would be the population of a few years ago, uh, which tells this college graduate, if nobody had been born in East Africa since the last famine, there would be no famine there today. Just saying. <clears throat> okay, so if 22 million people are starving in East Africa and 20, and there's 23 million more people in those countries than there were when they had a famine 11 years ago. 
Now you see what I'm saying? If the population were 23 million people less than fewer than it is, does that mean nobody would be starving in Sub-Saharan Africa? Do your own math. But anyway, we're going to wind up with a question. Now, I notice, I, I hear rumors that that little eco-pussy uh, over there at Collapse Chronicles is going to do a roundup today of all of the mainstream media bullshit uh, surrounding the equally bullshit claim that the eight billionth person was born on the planet today. Pulling this number directly out of their ass, it means nothing, okay, but just going along with the meme, the independent asking a question in a headline, but I'm gonna, but Sam Mitchell said, a ham bone little tail can take this one. The independent asking, the, asking a question today, what does a global population of eight billion people mean for the planet. A global population of eight billion people, I would say the same for seven billion people, six billion people, five billion people, four billion people, three billion people. I think you get my point is the planet is fucked, is what it means. We're fucked. Is there, is there anything that anybody fails to understand about what a global population of 8 million people means for planet Earth? It means certainly that every single one of our fellow Earthlings well, with the possible exception of rats and little domestic creatures, which are human inventions, uh, they're fucked. You know, every one of our fellow Earthlings, and of course, it, it means we're fucked too. It just means we're gonna fuck all of our uh, fellow Earthlings off the face of the planet before we fuck ourselves off. Uh, let the great fuck off begin. Eight billion clueless fucking morons on this fucking planet. Anyway, uh, speaking of that little eco pussy Sam Mitchell over at Collapse Chronicles, uh, I guess check in with that dude. Get out there and enjoy your eight billion fellow humans while you still can. We're so fucked. Bye guys. Well, let me figure out how to turn this off.